Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the June 17th regular meeting of the Pine Richland School Board to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Mr. Lyons? Here. Ms. Misbach? Here. Mr. Kashani? Dr. Campbell, Mr. DiTullio, here. Ms. Goebel, here. Dr. Meyer, Dr. Mihalik, here. Mr. Moy, thank you. Thank you. We have a number of retiree recognitions that we'd like to address first in our agenda. I'll turn it over to Ms. Hathorne. Thank you. As you know, in May, we recognized six retirees who served a combined total of 90 years at Pine Richland. Tonight, we will add 52 more years of combined service to that list by honoring two additional school retirees. First, paraeducator Barbara Sullivan is retiring after 27 years of service. She began her career as a playground assistant and then a kindergarten assistant at Washington Elementary School in 1992. After Washington closed, she moved to Richland Elementary where she served 16 more years. Mrs. Sullivan had the opportunity to move to Eden Hall Upper Elementary School after it opened and has been serving as a paraeducator ever since. Mrs. Sullivan's colleague says she is very in tune with the children and invests time with each child. They say she is very upbeat and always has a smile on her face. Maybe not tonight because she's a little <laughs> bit sad. Uh, P Mrs. Sullivan says she cannot say enough in turn about Pine Richland being blessed to be hired by Pine Richland and make a difference in the lives of so many. She says the small things add up and mean so much to the children. Before the end of the school year, the sixth graders created a Barbara Sullivan honor wall in which they paid tribute to her. One student shared that he will miss Mrs. Sullivan when she is not around. He had remarked one time when she was not in class, it's just not the same. He said, your smile is not here. Mrs. Sullivan will be spending more time with her husband, Mike, and three sons and their families, which include three grandchildren and their families and several grand dogs. So uh, if you'd like to come up and say a, a few words, I know your family's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to thank the administration and the board for recognizing me this evening. My time with the school district has been a wonderful and rewarding experience. I'm beyond proud to tell people that I work for Pine Richland. I will take with me many, many fond memories. The children I've worked with over the years have given me more than I could ever imagined, more than I could ever have taught them, and I've learned so much from them. I can't imagine doing anything else. While I was somewhat hesitant to end my career, it's time for me to enjoy this part of my life with my husband of 41 years, three sons, three daughter-in-laws, um, grand, three grandchildren, um, extended family and friends. Working full time, there's just not enough time to spend with them. So tonight I want to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity you've given me and I will cherish it always. We also would like to thank uh, Mr. John Haddad, Pine Richland Middle School Learning Support Teacher, who served 25 years at Pine Richland. We cannot thank you enough, uh, Barb, and also John, for dedication to the children over the years. So thank you. <laughs> 
As we close out our list of retirements, we have an additional retiree to recognize. After nearly 30 years, Mr. Pat Clare is retiring as Pine Richland solicitor. Mr. Clare joined Gehring, Retter, and Bame in 1981 and is member of the school and municipal law group at GRB. Mr. Clare represents public schools and municipal agencies. He represents these entities in all aspects of organization, management, operations, and finance. Mr. Pat Clare began working working on Pine Richland matters in 1989 and was appointed a solicitor in the early 90s. We're pinpointing 1993. Uh, Mr. Clare not only served as the appointed solicitor for Pine Richland, but has served Hampton and Quaker Valley School District as well as special counsel to various other school districts. Prior to GRB, Mr. Clare served as an appellate law clerk with the Commonwealth Court of Pennsylvania. Um, he says he has had the good fortune of having outstanding mentors in law and integrity and the opportunity to work with hundreds of board members who volunteer their time. So it is my pleasure to thank Mr. Clare for his dedication. But first, we have a couple uh, members of your past here. <laughs> so I think uh, Dr. Manley would like to say a few words. Watch out when you get a retired superintendent at a board meeting. <laughs> got some things to say. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I really feel blessed to have been part of this school district uh, for nine and a half years. What a great place. And Mrs. Sullivan, uh, she exemplifies really what this place is all about. If I could just say just a quick story. One of my jobs with six grandchildren in the area is to serve like a Uber driver. Like tonight I was supposed to be at a baseball game, but it's raining, thank God, because I can be here. But on the last day of school, I have a granddaughter at the middle school. And I, my job was to pick her up, they had an early dismissal, with six of her girlfriends, and take them to an afternoon pirate game. On the last day of school, I figured, this is gonna be great because they're going to be so happy and excited to be out of school for the summer. This is going to be fun to be with them. And as they're coming out of school, they're crying their eyes out. They're bawling. I'm saying, what, what's the problem? What's, what's going on? We don't want school to end. We love our teachers. They love us. We care. They care about us. We don't want this school, school year to end. I said, you know, that's the testimony of what work you are doing. The school board, Brian Miller, and his staff. Keep up the good work. My family is benefiting from that with two of my grandchildren in the school district. Speaking of a great job and benefiting, I had the opportunity to work with Pat along with you know, George Szymanski did for a number of years before me uh, as a solicitor. And what a tremendous job he did for the board and for this school district. He had great expertise. What I liked about Pat was he always would get back to me in a timely uh, manner. And he would never really tell us what to do. He would say, let's think about this through. Let's get the interaction of the board and the administration together to decide what position you want to take. You know a good lawyer can defend either side. And I can do that as a lawyer, says Pat Clare. And he would tell me the story about, it's like being on a dock. You got one foot on the dock, and you got one in the boat. Now I can defend staying on the dock, or I can defend staying in the boat. Just don't take off in the boat with my leg on the dock. <laughs> Laugh. <laughs> but he had a great sense of humor. He was easy to work with. And he really cared. He talked about caring for children, focus on children. That was his focus during his years, uh, for the many years he served as a solicitor here in this school district. So I speak on behalf of all of those that were here, served before you on the school board for many years, some great people that served in your positions, along with those people that dealt with uh, Pat Clare over the years, what a great job he did, and we want to wish him the very best. Now, Pat. You're going to really enjoy the retirement years. I mean, the TV lineup in the afternoon is outstanding. <laughs> At 2 o'clock, you watch Gunsmoke. At 3 o'clock, it's Wagon Train. 
And at 4 o'clock, you got the Andy Griffith Show. It's just outstanding just to watch that. But we wish you the very best, and, and thank you very much for the opportunity to be invited to this occasion tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we have one other special guest. Uh, that would be Santa Claus. <laughs> you all know that this is a special occasion if I get out this time of year, so I had to make sure I came to honor my good friend and kin, uh, Pat Clare. Pat has been here at uh, the school district since before I even moved in here and been um, providing legal services and advice to various school board members for, uh, I guess, probably two generations in this district. And he was particularly helpful to one somewhat clueless president a couple of years ago who was trying to arbitrate a somewhat divisive issue in the community and on whom this particular school board president had to rely very frequently and who beat his ear off with uh, constant questions. And Pat was able to sort of talk him down from the wall on a number of occasions. So, Pat, from the depths of my heart, I want to thank you for your service here on the board. Um, you also have the greatest sense of style of any man I've ever seen served in this position. And um, forget this retirement. We got a job for you up north when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, but for, the, for those who don't know, there's a little inside joke that goes along with the Santa thing, and we'll just keep it inside. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, okay. So I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, so, so there, there are, as you all know, many words uh, for lawyers, and I'm not thinking of those other words uh, that you're all thinking of. Um, attorney, attorney at law, esquire. The word that comes to mind for Pat Clare is counselor. Um, he always saw his role as a counselor, and especially to us board members. I know from experience, uh, one of Pat's favorite nights was when new board members uh, came on board. Uh, he would always sort of wax nostalgic about the Jeffersonian ideal. Uh, he pictures all of us retiring to our farm fields when we're done here, like Cincinnati. But, uh, that illusion notwithstanding, he has a great, a great respect for the work that we do. Um, and that's personally uh, means a lot to us because we, we do feel unthanked sometimes. And I know that Pat felt it was his personal mission to support us, uh, make it easier on us, and to counsel us. And if over the course of your career as it's been mine, you, uh, you may have stumbled if you ever felt embarrassed for your lack of knowledge of the finer details of parliamentary procedure or uh, a proper response under PA code, it wasn't because Pat made you feel that way. There were plenty of opportunities, um, but at best, actually, he helped you stumble through that and feel that it was your own elegance and intelligence that reached the proper solution and outcome. Uh, there's no better compliment I can pay to the man than that he makes you look better. So thank you so much for your good counsel. Thank you. So again, I want to recognize Dr. Savansky is here tonight, a former superintendent. And I think, Pat, you had a chance to work with five superintendents at some point here at Pine Richland. You don't have to answer that. That's just an observation. <laughs> we um, kind of run together, Brian. Yeah, I know. They all, we all look the same. The, um, the first, uh, Mrs. Sullivan, you know, you are someone who brings energy into the school and in any workforce in any group of staff there are people who leave others better no matter what happens and certainly that's what we've seen ourselves as we have interacted with you and not all the time does the district office staff really know and understand the work that a paraeducator para might do in a building we all know you because of the work that you do but more importantly because of the attitude you bring into the workplace and in a school, that's, there's nothing better than that. So Mr. Smith's here tonight, and you will be sorely missed because of the quality of your character, so thank you. So for, for Mr. Clare, um, once a year at least, I, I call him to thank him, unrelated to the reason 
a solicitor's phone rings most of the time. And the email and phone usually are an issue or a problem or something that's happening and, and we need your, uh, your counsel, your advice. Uh, but once a year outside of a fire, I call him to, to express appreciation because all of those different superintendents, all of those different school boards, what Pine Richland as a community looked like in 1991 or in the 80s and what it looks like today and all of those changes, having someone in your role with that continuity to bring an awareness, a history, a knowledge, to transfer that, to be a common point is significant. Um, it's not just the issues that arise from time to time. It's being able to help thread together history and continuity so that the schools can continue to operate in, in a, uh, at a high level. And I don't know that people understand or appreciate uh, that about a solicitor. I would not have used timely or punctual. To is that what you used, Dr. Manley? I would not have used timely to describe <laughs> Mr. Clare. Maybe over the decades. I'm an early morning riser. Mr. Clare is not, not <laughs> an, an early morning riser. So I do my best work about 5.30 a.m. And it's usually better around 5.30 p.m. When, <laughs> when Pat gets fired up. But knowledgeable, humble, unbelievable sense of humor. And, and again, as we tackle at times, people don't realize how complex K-12 public education is. And at times, you need a solicitor. And what I like about Pat, many things, one of them is his knowledge and experience is there. Uh, but it's also great to see him uh, get feisty every once in a while. Sometimes that's behind closed doors, sometimes not. But really that, um, that passion for the law and really framing that passion around students and supporting what is best for students and for the school district. So uh, again, thank you so much on behalf of the entire district uh, for what you have provided. That continuity in the times of change that exist uh, is just so important. So thank you, Pat. Thank you. Well, okay, so I think what, what would you like to do next? We'll yeah, give we'll gift, see. shake hands, and then yeah. if you want to share some comments. I might. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> okay. So do you want to come around? Sure. Is that all right? Boy, I've known everybody's thoughts so highly on me. I might not retire. <laughs> 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 Yeah, definitely. You get that. You can open this as well. Yeah, great. Thank you. It's not often I stand on this side of the dais. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Peter. Jenny. Greg. <laughs> 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 What's that time limit? Three. Oh. <laughs> Three minutes, strictly speaking. Two minutes, 58 seconds, technically. <laughs> 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 That's private <laughs> reserve. <Yeah, yeah. laughs> well, you know, Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln said you got to practice winging it because it doesn't matter how much law you know, so nobody wants a lawyer who can't stand up and give a speech. So uh, I've, I've tried to hew to a number of things he said, but that was one of them. Um, you know, I was going to go to the Jefferson thing because yeah, that, that's really heartfelt when I do that. You know, I, I, I think about that so often that it is people, especially at the school board level, there's not even a stipend for you guys. You know, and I sit on the dais for 30 years, various places, being one of two or three people who's being compensated for their effort. But to see, every, see these other people come out from various corners of the ring, so to speak, you know, and, and fight, argue, you know, to a lawyer, arguing is a, it's a solemn thing, you know, it's not a violent, it's a, it's a solemn, sacred thing to do. But to see people come and, and give themselves to the interest of the public, you know, in the form of their children, it's just, just marvelous. And, you know, I didn't know when I came through law school what I was going to do. I knew I was headed towards the public arena in some way from family history and, and government. But 
whether it was going to be municipal or state or federal agencies, I don't know. But you know, you, you, don't, you don't get a lot of work in the area in which you become expert. You become expert in the area in which you get a lot of work. And it just happened for me that coming through school and then the Commonwealth Court and then coming to our, to our firm in 1981, um, I fell into a, a path of uh, uh, representing and counseling school districts. And it's, it's been a joy. Um, not always happy, but always, always joyous to be in it because I've had to be in the, in the, in the crosshairs of a lot of disputes you know, sort of trying to, you know, fend off shots from a lot of different directions to help people come to some, to some resolution of it. And that's, you know, that's, that's, been, that's been the fun of it. Uh, I've had the good fortune to work, not just here, but everywhere I've worked, with boards and senior leadership who were not interested in themselves. They were interested in the mission. They came to the organization to serve it, to advance its mission, not their own. And I've always been able to listen for, are people talking about what or are they talking about who? And I've found through the years that when people are talking about what, they're on the right path. When they're talking about who, they're going down a bad road. Here, it's always been about what. And I, I've appreciated that. The, uh, you know, it's, it's a certain anxious melancholy uh, about changing, changing my life and that sort of thing. But, but I'm Irish, so, you know, I, I'm melancholy on a good day. I've tried to use it as an asset sometimes to, to feel other people's awkwardness and, and stress and, and their pain. And I've tried to bring that out uh, through, my, through my counsel to people too. Uh, not, with a, not with the pablum of well, what's good for the kids, but really remembering that's what we're here to do. We're not just here for those kids, we're here for our country. We're here for our country so that our country can continue to lead the way in self-government. You go back to Washington, Jefferson, all those guys, what they talked about was you have to have an educated public if the people are going to govern themselves. If, if you don't educate the people, the people are gonna fall victim to the kings and the princes and the nobles and the priests, and they're gonna be dominated from above. And we can't afford that. We, we won't be who we are, we won't get what we're gonna get. So it's been a great pleasure for me, you know, honestly, meaning no disrespect, not to spend my life saying the red car ran into the blue car. People need to do that, and there's a role for that. But I've got to participate in other things to say, what are we going to do to move our country along? You know, there's times I've wished I could have controlled things, and I didn't, but they all seem to work out in the end because of an underlying faith that precedes the law for me. But, uh, you know, there's a time for everybody to turn over their responsibilities to somebody else. And uh, that time has, that time's come in my life. And, uh, you know, it's funny, as, as this has happened, I've had a couple of people say, sometimes, are you sure you need to quit now? You know, people I find out, yeah, they do like having me around. But I say it's probably better to leave when, when people still feel good about it, you know? <laughs> and I know I, I won't leave with anybody saying, boy, I'm glad he's gone. But uh, I guess in the future, if somebody shows up so tired, you, you'll have to guess who it might be. <laughs> it, it could be any of a number of people. Yeah, thanks. That's about all I could say in the end. Thank you. Well, while Mr. Clare joins us, because uh, your work is not done, Pat, uh, I would encourage our visitors and their guests to uh, take leave of us. It's a beautiful summer evening. Yeah, thank you. The rain has stopped. Right, right. Uh, we had Pat speak as long as it took for the rain to stop, so uh, please enjoy, and then we'll, we'll pick up with our recognition of visitors with business before the board in two minutes. recognition of visitors uh, those who would like to address the board you may do so at this time I encourage you to try to limit your comments to three minutes per, per speaker 
Uh, let us know your name as well. My name is John Arnold. I reside, <clears throat> excuse me, at 3725 Northfield Drive. I want to congratulate first the, the uh, retirees. That, that is something special. And, and now I'm going to proceed with a wet blanket. I've acquiesced long enough, and the timing is such that my son graduated this past uh, June 7th. At the June 7th graduation, the president of the school board addressed the students and said, congratulations to 88% of you, or those of you, who applied and got into your first or second choice of a college and university. The remaining 11%, I admire your reach. Now I ask, what the hell does that mean? What consists of the final 11, and what and who consists of the final 11%? Did everybody apply to a college and university, and did everybody play sports in that graduating class? What about those kids that went to Vote Tech School, got their requirements done, and are now headed out to the real, wor real world to practice a trade. My son wondered that, who graduated two years ago, just completed his requirements at Beatty Tech, has a full-time job, has no debt, and is not subject to the liberal, social, communist ideology of said colleges and universities. And what about the 30 or the 25 cadets in ROTC, the senior cadets that put together and held together an unbelievable program led by Major Morrison and Chief Gasparato? Dr. Miller, by the way, saved that program this past year by uh, having Mars join us. And lastly, and most importantly, how about recognizing the kids that are going into the military in about three to four weeks to defend this country and keep it free and allowing high schools and colleges and universities to have safe spaces where kids can go when they cannot handle an ingrown toenail. It was pompous, it was arrogant, and it was ignorant. And finally, speaking of vets, there was an opportunity blown when Connor Green, who served in Afghanistan, two tours, showed up to do his observation and student teaching and was dismissed. Now, you can go into having the proper papers and the requirements and what needs, what needs to be divulged and that type of thing. Now, he could have been welcome to stay on board while it may have taken a day to get that paperwork in line. He had to have it. He walked the, the grounds of Duquesne University. And then I had a board member tell me that there was concerns about allergies because Connor Green and his service dog, Bradley, were present. Now, on any given day, there's a hundred, if not thousands, of allergens introduced into these halls. Wool sweaters, cashmere, food, perfumes, colognes. Anybody, any student that enters kindergarten if they are keenly aware of their allergy, which I'm sure they're going to be, they're obviously going to stay away from that source. And in regard to a, a service dog, a service dog does not approach humans without giving the command allowed to do so. It's ridiculous. And I have to say, and I'm at risk because I'm, I'm risking a couple personal relationships here, but at graduation parties, these discussions did not go unnoticed or carried on. 
My celebration was to get my final kid out from underneath this board and a couple in the administration. Thank you. All right, good evening, board. My name is Bill Peabody. Uh, I live at 5639 Fairfield Drive in Gibsonia. Uh, been a resident of the school district now for six years, and I've been a school bus driver for Pine Richland for nine years. Uh, if you look on my Facebook page, it does not say I was an employee of Monarch. It does not say I was an employee of STA. It says I am a driver for Pine Richland School District. I'm proud of this district. Now, I've been a CDL DOT certified driver for 42 years. Proud to say accident and violation free. That's an accomplishment, by the way, driving truck in Pittsburgh. I was forced into an early retirement after suffering a career-ending shoulder injury. Before my retirement in 2010, I worked 25 years as a sales rep where I was on the safety committee for 15 of those years. I've been a school bus driver now for Pine Richland since January 2011. For the past five years, I also drove the pickup truck used to tow the high school band trailer whenever the band goes to an away event or to Florida. Since STA took over, I've been telling them that the mirrors on their truck are not proper to tow the trailer with. I've been told by management as high up as Paul, the Vice President of Operations for PA, that they are not buying expensive mirrors to tow a trailer used a handful of times a year. Uh, two years ago, when the band went to Universal Studios, I offered to drive my truck instead of theirs. Uh, I have a 2016 Ford F-250 with a complete uh, full trailer package on it that I use to tow my 35-foot RV trailer around, the same size as their band trailer here. STA management said that I had to drive their truck. Now in the past, this past October, Mr. Scott got his dream trailer that he had consulted with me on the build with Chris Rudolph, who did a fabulous job outfitting that trailer. It's a gorgeous trailer. Uh, the trailer is six inches wider than the old one. I went to Colleen, our manager, and uh, asked her permission to take a dry run to hook up the new trailer before it had to be towed to the first football game, which was North Allegheny this past year. Uh, this is to verify that the hitch is the right height. If it's too low, you have too much weight on the truck. If it's too high, you're going to get the tail end dragging on the ground. Uh, and also to make sure that the safety chains and electrical all hooked up before we went up for the trip. She said that it was a waste of time and I just wanted to make more money and it was not necessary. After a little debate, she sent Andy, her assistant manager, with me to videotape me doing this hookup. I showed him that the trailer was wider and that I couldn't see past the front edge of the trailer with the mirrors that were on the truck. We went back to Colleen about this issue where I showed her what good trailer mirrors look like on my pickup truck. I also showed her where she could buy the OEM spec, that's original equipment manufacturers, uh, mirrors that would be about $150 for the set to put on the truck. Not that expensive when you're talking safety. And I gave her several printouts as to where she could buy them. She said she would table this issue for now. I had to drive the truck to two football games without being able to see to change lanes or to back up. This is uh, because she chose to ignore me on this. This is very unsafe. The band this year went to Disney in April. My wife, Kathy, sitting here, was asked to go with us uh, by the invitation of Mr. Scott. The reason for that is he wanted somebody to be riding in the truck with me. STA made her fill out, she's a school bus driver too, STA made her fill out a vacation request since they were not paying her to go on this trip, to take the time off to go on a trip. They also made me fill out a vacation request since, in their words, I am not on a school trip and I am taking time off to drive the band trailer to Florida. So that turn, I would assume that I'm not working for STA if I'm on vacation, but according to them, my pay still had to go through their payroll you know, to justify what I was doing. 
I refuse to drive their truck for safety reasons as permitted by DOT regulations, which states that I am allowed to refuse any vehicle that is unsafe to drive until it is fixed properly. When I went and looked at the truck two weeks before the trip, I found out that the little pieces of mirror that they put on as extensions for me to see behind the truck were actually broken because the uh, mechanics use this truck to plow the snow all winter. They broke the mirror and were told that they were not to replace it. And I was told by them I had to drive it to Florida with a broken mirror. Totally unacceptable. Standing in the, stating that the truck had I also stated that the truck had tires that were not fit for driving to Florida because they were so worn out and because of the backing up issues and lane changings that I wasn't driving their truck for the mirrors. Uh, I told them that I would be driving my truck instead. They said I would be fired if I drove my truck. I said it's all about safety. The day before the trip at 9.30 a.m. when I finished up my morning run, I was called by Colleen and told that she is taking her people, as she told me, and she wouldn't tell me who they were, up to hook up the band trailer. They did not have Mr. Scott's permission either on this, by the way. Uh, six people plus Colleen and Andy went up and they had me hook up the trailer since none of them knew how to do it. And for almost two hours, they stood there trying to see what I could see in these mirrors. And their safety guy was actually jumping around. Can you see me here? Can you see me here? It was a total joke. Mr. Scott thought it was hilarious. They realized how big of blind spots they had. But then uh, they said that it was several, I'm sorry, let me get back to this. Her people found how big a blind spots there were and said it was impossible for me to drive the truck to Florida. But they were apprehensive about agreeing with me because they didn't want to get in trouble with the boss. Colleen insisted it was okay and if I didn't drive it, she would have someone else do the job. Mr. Stott, Scott stood up watching in total disbelief and asked me if it was safe. I said no. They concluded that it was and told me that when changing lanes, I should look into the mirror and then jump over into the passenger seat to see if anything is down the right-hand side of the trailer to change lanes. It's a 35-foot long trailer, and going 70 mile an hour on an interstate, you definitely don't take your eyes off the road. You glance into the mirror to see if something's there. Another totally unsafe thing. Okay, uh, while I was driving we south, to, we try to keep I'm it trying to hurry up here, I'm Thank almost you. done. Thank when you. driving south on Interstate 77 where it merges with 81 in Virginia, I thought I blew out a right rear tire on the truck. When it started to shake and push me to one side, I knew that if I hit the truck brakes, I would jackknife that trailer by the way the truck, the trailer was pushing me. I jammed on the trailer brakes instead to lock them up to pull the truck back in line safe. I pulled over and checked the tires and found that there was not a flat tire, but upon further inspection, the brand new tires they put on were a lightweight tire that is the minimum specification for that truck instead of a 10 ply tread tire that should be on for towing a trailer the way to what your band trailer is. When I returned to Pittsburgh, I asked the mechanics who put the cheap tires on the truck, and they told me that Colleen ordered them. No one in the office asked me how the trip went except for one staff member who asked, were you and Kathy in a bar Saturday night? They didn't know my schedule in Florida, but they were tracking me on the GPS, the truck's GPS. The tour manager gave me my orders every night for what, what I was supposed to do the next day. On, Friday, on Saturday, I spent the day in Epcot with my wife. We returned to the hotel around 6.30 so that I could hook up the trailer because I had to take it for an orchestra workshop at a Disney location. I drove about 10 miles away from Disney and was in a strip mall type building for the orchestra workshop. The tour director told me it was an industrial area and gave me the address, but there was no markings on the building. It said it was actually a Disney building. Uh, I arrived there at 7.45. The workshop went from 8 o'clock until midnight. 
It was 12.30 when I finally got the instruments loaded back onto the truck, onto the trailer, and 1 p.m. when I got back to the hotel. This is why they thought I was in a bar, because they couldn't distinguish where I was at, and that's what they assumed, that I was sitting in a bar drinking. Uh, once I got back, nobody asked me, like I said, about the trip. On uh, the first time anything was said about this trip was at the May safety meeting where it, they went on for 15 minutes saying that I went off the reservation thinking that I was going to drive my own truck and they didn't know anything about tires or safety procedures. They said I should, that they had a tire expert put the tires on the truck and that I am not an expert. They belittled me in front of all my co-workers assassinating my character and my reputation. They said the problem I had with the tires was because I was driving at excessive speeds at over 80 mile an hour. That's false. I'm a professional driver and would never put my license or myself or my wife in harm's way. And she'll guarantee you that I was not driving over the speed limit. I asked them to prove this and they says, well, we have a stack of GPS papers, but they didn't show it to me. Mr. Peabody, if you have additional details, you can certainly provide your, your written comments to the well, board for all the Let me finish with one more thing. Thank you. I feel so, um, I'm sorry that I had to leave STA. My wife and me have both left STA and are no longer driving for Pine Richland. But we are driving for A.J. Myers, where we were welcomed with open, open arms. My friend Bob here drove for STA the first two years. He left two years ago and is being assassinated in a letter four weeks after we left STA for his character. My friend Sam left a year ago to go to work at A.J. Myers. STA is mad because we are friends and they are assassinating us in a letter from their vice president of operation. I have it here because it got sent to Robin uh, Spencer and he asked me to forward it to you tonight because he's in New Jersey. I feel sorry for the, the students that I had to leave behind and I know the comments that I got and the good times that I've had with them, but it's a situation where I had to move on because I could not work under a hostile work environment with the constant character assassinations. You know, I know Greg over here from his daughter, Mr. Lyons, I hauled your son, and I had a good story to tell you about Mr. Moy's kids because I hauled them for four years. His oldest daughter uh, rode my elementary run. She moved on to the Eden Hall here. And I always used to joke around with her when she got off the bus on Fridays because she always had a friend with a bus pass. And I said, you know, there's a fee for riding home an extra student, and that's $5. And she used to always laugh about it. Now, I never collected the money. This is just a joke. Olivia wound up getting on my Eden Hall bus with a friend this past year. And she looked at me and goes, oh, hi, Mr. Bill. Is it still $5 to ride home with someone on your bus? <laughs> But I thoroughly enjoyed these kids. And I left the thing in here, I'm going to leave it with you and the email with you too that you see what they sent to us, chastising us and that. This is wrong. You're wondering why you're losing so many seasoned drivers. 17 since January, by the way, if you don't know that. And from what I understand, there's another 10 to 15 drivers that are ready to walk out of here right now this summer because they are so fed up with the management and the way they run this company at STA. Something needs to be done. I'm sorry to say, but thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? We will move on to item 1.04, correspondence. Ms. Williams? Jody Mann emailed the board regarding the gifted program. Thank you. Item 1.05 is a motion to approve the minutes as attached to the June 3rd planning meeting. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
And by all means, folks, this is a very <coughs> formal agenda. Don't feel like you have to stay. Uh, I appreciate you coming out and making your, your opinion known, but you, you can feel free to. It gets a little boring and dry. Strategic plan update, Dr. Miller. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't need it. I won't take it. I'm okay. This is actually the good part. He didn't say that about me. This is the good part. This is the best part. It's true. Right after this, it slows down. Okay. The so a couple things here again. It's we included this mostly because it's an opportunity to get on a public agenda. But the, you know, one of the, with the approval of the strategic plan and a comprehensive plan, one of the next pieces is our annual retreat cycle. So SLT, the senior leadership team, we met last week. The principals will have the retreat with Dr. P, Dr. Silbon, Mr. Huswit this week. And then we're working towards the board workshop in July. And it's a nice sequence in order to see where have we been, where are we now, where are we going. We tie that into the strategic plan. One of the pieces that we've included here is the highest level survey results that we've had. So five years now of the parent survey and three years of the student and staff survey. It's an anonymous survey. It is optional for them to complete. We encourage it because we want to hear their voice and we want to understand what's happening. But the, the results, um, it is not easy to be vulnerable. And when you ask people to, to weigh in on programs and services and what's happening, uh, you, you are vulnerable. The results uh, we think are incredibly positive this year. So this is again the highest level. There's many, many questions to the surveys. Uh, we spent some time uh, analyzing those results. We will also break those results into the different groups. So staff, for example, will be broken into teachers versus paraeducators versus others. Buildings will have the opportunity to look not only at their building results, but also to do the same thing, to look by work group for staff and have a, a deeper understanding there. So again, just wanted to, to share this publicly. Uh, we'll be sharing more with our parents as we get into the July uh, update. Thank you, Dr. Finance, Mr. Kashani. Item 3.01. Motion to approve the financial reports dated May 31st, 2019 and accounts payable dated June 17, 2019 in the amount of $1,010,126.49 and paid accounts for May, June in the amount of $5,992,805.77 as listed. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3.02, motion to approve the budget transfers in the amount of $1,084,356 as attached. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3.03. Motion to authorize the transfer of $814,968 from the general fund to the capital reserve fund. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Dr. Moy, could you handle uh, Dr. Meyer's segment on academic achievement? I'm sorry, Dr. Mihaly. <laughs> a lot of oh. items. Sure. Uh, item 4.01, purchase of curriculum resources. There's a motion to approve the purchase of curricular resources, curricular resource materials and business at a cost of $47,288.44 and social studies at a cost of $8,100 for a total amount of $55,388.44. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4.02, Blackboard Learn Agreement. 
is a motion to approve an, ad an additional one-year contract as attached with Blackboard Learn in the amount of $21,716.67. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4.03 is a reminder of a joint academic achievement and student services committee meeting uh, scheduled for August 5th, uh, 2019 at 6 o'clock p.m. The gifted and or highly achieving program will be discussed. Other topics will be decided at a later time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dottolio, Buildings and Grounds. Okay. I'm going to start off, and I uh, apologize for not having done this at the planning meeting. Um, I was unable to attend, but um, and also in the absence of uh, a couple of our board members today, um, in looking through the agenda, I am going to make a motion uh, for a consent agenda for um, buildings and grounds items 5.01 to 5.05 for student services, items 6.01 to 6.03, for staff services, items 7.01 to 7.09, and for um, operational services, item 8.01 to 8.05. Of course, we can pull out any of those if anyone objects, but um, they've been discussed. Uh, do we have a second for the consent motion? Second. The motion's been made and seconded. In terms of discussion, I just want to take the time to pause and clarify. Uh, at this time, it would be good if somebody has an issue or would like further discussion or deliberation on any of the items that Mr. Tertullio enumerated uh, to indicate, and we can pull them out from the consent agenda at this time uh, for further deliberation. Just take a moment, read through those. 501 to 505, 601 to 603, 701 through 709, the entire 700 series, and 801 to 805. Okay, is there any other discussion about the consent item agenda? We're going to just approve the, um, essentially, the amendment to, to vote it, and then we'll go ahead and vote on that. So, is everyone agree on the agenda change? Mm -hmm. We're going to make those all consent items. And at this point, we'll move directly to voting for that consent agenda, that consent agenda item 501 to 505, 601 to 603, 701 through 709, 801 to 805. Any discussion? All those in favor of the consent agenda as enumerated, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So now, if I'm keeping track properly, we're on. Item 5.06. That is correct. <laughs> Excellent. Did we have to officially vote on the yeah. consent first? I think we only well, made one you vote. I did. You was right. unanimous consent to okay. amend the agenda, and Good. then that vote was on the item itself. See, I wasn't keeping track that right. But. So please, just want to say please. a quick thank you. That was the 300s batch was included in that. Yeah. <laughs> We it's been years of working through batch policy, so I just wanted to give that a moment of celebration <laughs> because that's a that's we, a lot of work. We that could have no pulled one, that to celebrate it. No one is. I mean, again, there's work that's that's enjoyable, and then there's work that is responsible, and this this falls under the responsible work. And um, I'm glad that we made it through the patches. So thank you. <laughs> and and now we start over. No, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> now pretty, much. pretty much we're focused on ARs we got a year off for batch okay. policy review <laughs> all right um, are we good to continue please item 5.06 is a building and ground project update and I I'm gonna assume that's you not Dana today right okay uh, good evening everyone I'm Jeff Zimmerman in the facilities department just gonna go over our summer project list and kind of hit some of the highlights of it. I know it's a long list. Uh, just wanted to start out just saying that the maintenance and custodial team is doing a fantastic job. This is just a snapshot of what they're doing right now, in addition to many other things, getting ready for you know graduation that was passed and everything. So just a great group of guys and, uh, and ladies on the team. Um, so it is a long list. It's sorted, as you can see, um, by timing on the left there, also by building. 
and um, it is a living document. We update it weekly and go through it and, and get with Dana on the costs and things like that to make sure that we're tracking everything accurately and making sure we're spending the dollars appropriately. All right, so in the project list, the main types, the large projects that we have, we have uh, a restroom project at Richland that we're currently planning. Uh, met with the architect today. We're also doing windows at Richland. Um, some other big projects are carpet at Hans and also at the middle school, which is underway right now and uh, Wexford flooring. We're going to do the uh, overlay over the, um, the tile that's in there that's breaking up a little bit and causing some tripping issues. So that's coming up as well. Uh, we're also adding a glass security wall at the middle school so we can separate um, all the people that come in for uh, after school activities from being able to enter the rest of the, uh, the building. Uh, and. Um, as you can see, we just approved um, the projects for athletics for the basketball flooring. So that's one of that's coming up here um, in July. Uh, another category in here is the purchases. So a lot of these line items are purchases. A lot of them are for janitorial equipment. They're also for a box truck, which we're replacing for Eden Hall um, cafeteria. And those items are waiting until uh, the 1st of July till the budget rolls over. So a lot of those are purchases. And, uh, and there's also some ongoing maintenance on the list. So a lot of different categories, um, a lot of different projects, uh, just a lot of, uh, just a long, long list of what we're working on. And finally, the last uh, category are surveys and assessments. So in addition to doing projects and purchases, we're doing assessments on the roofs right now and also the controls, the HVAC controls at Richland in the middle school, which we're going to use that data to kind of come back to you on future purchases, future upgrades, things like that. So in addition to doing normal projects, we're trying to do some assessments so we can give you guys a little bit more uh, idea of uh, where we can spend our money wisely and uh, save the district some money. Just to interject as well, as Mr. Zimmerman mentioned, we, we meet often, it could be almost daily. Um, about a lot of our projects that are currently going on, and you may remember that we did sustain some um, damage to our buildings here on this campus um, from the hailstorm that we recently had. Um, just an update on that, Mr. Zimmer Zimmerman is doing an amazing job of gathering all of that information. He has a shared Google document that he's working through with um, not only the insurance carrier, but then also the independent um, insurance adjuster in there includes everything of a listing of all of the different pieces of equipment, um, roofing, HVAC equipment, even the vehicles, the band trailer that we had discussed earlier, that everything is listed in there. And then he's also pulling together not only pictures of the damage, but then also estimates and pieces of the assessments that he's referring to are also somewhat tied to that if they're related to this on campus as well. Um, one other point that I want to mention because we're unsure as to how this may or may not play out is that our, we do have some damage to our scoreboard at the stadium. Um, we did receive a quote over the weekend of repairs that are in the range of about $14,000. Um, in order to be competitive and be able to have that scoreboard up and truly functioning um, for our first competition, which I believe is August 17th, um, we may be moving forward with that repair. It is a CoStars vendor, um, and it is actually a vendor that we've worked with on those scoreboards in the past. Um, we will continue to kind of keep you in the loop, but I did want to bring that up because, again, our insurance claim is still very much in process. As we continue to look at different pieces of equipment, again, even in different ways, we start to realize that, you know, of the first round past the scoreboard, there was some damage some of these other things are coming to light after the fact. Um, so again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to either me or Mr. Zimmerman. But um, as we continue to work through the insurance claim process, you know, we'll definitely keep you in the loop on that as well. Yeah, there, in following the hail damage, there's also all of the questions regarding just the scope of work, the, the bidding that's gonna have to take place. You know, every piece of green roof on this building stadium you know will all need to be replaced and so we're I mean there's a lot of work to come 
uh, some of which aligns with the capital funding plan and what was right. anticipated anyway, and obviously a whole bunch that was not. So uh, significant work to be done, planning, right. timing, you name it. And we have looked into, you know, sometimes people will refer to kind of the emergency um, areas in school code that you would be able to either go around bidding or cooperative purchasing. Typically, that would be for a building if it's uninhabitable at the time. And clearly, we are able to, you know, still be able to function here, but we need to make sure that when we go to repair those that we are within compliance of school code as well. So we'll be bringing all of those projects to you as they roll along. Um, and again, that is a living document, so we usually just kind of make a static picture of it whenever we bring it to you for an update. Um, but we'll continue to keep you in the loop on those. A um, couple things, if no one else has anything. So first of all, there's one right here right now. So, uh, Right. It's, I mean, literally. Uh, but uh, so when we look at all these projects, and including the insurance stuff, okay, so there's the you have to have it done in a certain amount of time, i.e. the ones we're pressed for time against for getting back to the school year, like you mentioned, um, and also the ones we can do later. From a timing standpoint, are we right now on pace to hit all the ones that have to be done on time for whether it's a school event, a school start, et cetera, et cetera? I know some of these stretch into September, you know, but it's on the roof. We can work on the roof when there's students here. Are, are we looking good time-wise on, on all this? I mean, I see the list, but it doesn't tell me, is this one running up against something and we're going to have some issues and need to... Sure. Right now, we don't have any risks on the current list right now. Okay. Everything looks like it's it's easily planned out and, and doable before this ki the kids come back or we have a workaround for it in place. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just as an example, the uh, the meeting, and this will be my update this, well, my update tomorrow since I'm, tomorrow's my last day this week, but um, at the Richland Windows Project, for example, that... Um, is looking like, not confirmed, but looking like second shift work, work that will, because of the sequence of events that it takes to get that ready to go, that work won't happen until after the school year has begun, but they're used to working through that, uh, you know, couple rooms at a time process, and there may even be some labor benefits to us for that second turn work. So mm -hmm. those types of yeah. things, they won't be done for the first day of school, but that's a part of the plan. Okay. And, and from the storm damage, is there anything that we're still, quote unquote, feeling from an operational standpoint, i.e. any of the roof mount or rooftop units that aren't working, creating environmental issues in the school right now? And can we jump ahead on those? I know it's not an emergency. Can we jump ahead on those, assuming there's going to be a claim? Or is that, do we not have the wiggle room to do that? So right now, most of our damage is cosmetic. Okay. Uh, the rooftop units, we, we functionality tested everything. And, uh, and we're working just fine. It's just uh, there's, there's a lot of things that need to be taken care of in the next two weeks or so to keep us from getting any potential other damage. Okay. But uh, the roof is probably our biggest concern. We have some rubber membrane issues that we're going to get taken care of right away. Okay. Do you want to touch on softball also? Okay. I'm sure I'll touch on softball. Okay. All right, so this is a, an update to our uh, softball project for the girls' softball field. And currently, this project is out for bid. We have a pre-bid meeting with contractors this Thursday. Uh, the scope of work of this project, I know this is a little bit hard to see. Uh, the main goal of our project is to make the, the field more playable in wet weather in the spring. That includes regrading the entire infield to give it more slope to get the water off the field. And once the water gets off the field, we have drains on the first base and third base side to take that water either to a catch basin on the third base side or, or out to a ditch on the first base side. So really um, working for the playability of the field. And while we're working on that too, we're gonna add some concrete behind um, the backstop uh, for some spectator areas, things like that. So we anticipate that the bids will come in we'll, and we'll have um, some information ready for you guys by about the 9th of July and then present it at the board meeting in July. And we're anticipating construction to start in late July and go into early September. So we have a nice window, we can get the work done. 
And just a reminder, too, one of the um, items that you just approved under the finance section was a transfer of funds. Um, if you didn't see, the detail of the $807,000 is actually listed on the budget transfer listing. Essentially, what I did was I went through and I, I truly found areas that were underspent, and some of those were intentionally underspent. So if I, you know, I can even use curriculum for an example. Whatever curriculum that we were able to approve and pull together and feel good about that we would be able to order and have delivered, because it's typically the delivery date that we're looking at, we would go ahead and we, we've been moving those forward for June approval. The other ones that we knew that we would rather wait, um, then we move those into July, which actually pushes into the 1920 fiscal year, which is fine, because that was what we intended. So some of those areas where we knew that we did have some surplus for whatever reason, we did put that into the transfer funds. That money will then move into capital reserve to help, help offset any of the either additional items that are coming in. If a project would go slightly over, um, it does give us some buffer for some of those projects as well. So I just wanted to All right, item 5.07 is just a reminder of the Buildings and Ground Committee meeting on July 18th, 2019 at 6 p.m. And that's a Thursday, and that is a non-regular or planning meeting. So it's uh, we can go all night. <coughs> We're going to hard stop that at 8. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Dr. Mihala, could you resume our agenda? We're at 8.06 uh, next, based on the consent items. Great. Item 8.06 is a strategic plan related to school start times. This is an information item. I think we have a... Yeah, oh, yeah I was going to say, if you would like to, mm -hmm. to enlighten yeah, us on this We just want to give one. you a couple of updates in our process for getting ready for next year with new school start times. Uh, you can see we added some of this information in the, um, for public to read as well. Uh, but uh, one of the items that recently went out, Dr. Kenny sent to the staff, uh, modified start times for staff. Um, we're excited about that at the secondary level in particular because it'll provide us a window of time from when staff comes in to when students come in. That, uh, that flexible time for some staff collaboration is, is really an added bonus for us. So in addition to the benefit for students, there's a benefit for, for collaboration, which we're excited about. We've had that K to six, but this is an addition now for secondary, so uh, that's a real positive. Um, kind of next steps as we go into the, into the summer months, you can see there uh, developing an FAQ for our community around st school start times. Um, we still have some communication around uh, what's the midpoint of the day that ties into our attendance. So that exact time we're working through that uh, with the building principals. Uh, we've been in communication with um, any of our third party or other vendors or supports uh, that are using our facilities or will be impacted by the school start time. So that communication uh, has been ongoing and, and we'll continue with that as well. And we had uh, talked with transportation and over spring break they had been doing the dry routes of the busing based on the sandbox that we had put into play to get some feedback from the drivers. And so now what they're doing is taking that and making actionable changes to the routes to make sure that they're as effective and efficient as possible so that when we launch next year um, we're set. There are still a few things that we're working out with private and parochials obviously um, being the biggest piece of the puzzle since their hours um, in most part are remaining identical. So just ensuring that we have the ability to make those runs and meet each of those. Um, will be the, the final steps there from that side. Will this impact Beatty students at all? Yeah, it's, um, again, in terms of, we've talked to Beatty in, in terms of the window of time that they have for our students to arrive, um, it will not be a problem. They have a window because of all the different school start times for all the schools that feed into Beatty. Uh, so we've been assured that the time that our students will arrive will fit within, uh, within their schedule. I would add, <clears throat> we did talk, this has probably been a year ago now, um, we continue and will continue to send students to Beatty a.m. or p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, there, were, mm -hmm. there was the possibility of, of sending them only one of those times, um, and that would, I think, be advantageous to Beatty, in fact. Mm, it was. But, yeah. uh, so they would appreciate having them come at one time. Mm -hmm. Our concern 
was that came out of the high school was we want students to have the flexibility. Some really appreciate the end of the day there. Some have been in that sequence for a period of time. So we continue to have both options. Thank you. So item uh, 8.07, uh, information item review of operational service committee meetings. So um, an operational service committee meeting was held prior to the regular meeting to discuss student information and financial information systems. If you I would just add more. that the, there's a presentation attached for those interested in this topic. They can, uh, can go to the presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item 9.01 is a motion to approve Christine Misbeck and Carla Meyer as our PSBA voting delegates for the 2019 assembly. Second. Is there any discussion? Thank you both for your service. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 9.02 is a motion to approve the attendance of any interested board member at the PASA PSBA school conference in October of this year. And Barb Williams. Second. True. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's why we let Barb write the motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On July 15th, we will have our next board workshop with senior leadership team uh, prior to the combined board meeting at 5 p.m. And there will be food. Uh, and good discussion and deliberation. So uh, we always move the ball forward. Excited about it. Yeah. <coughs> we have any action packed meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. allergies? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, reports. Dr. Miller, do you have anything? Christine? So I just wanted to uh, say that I have been invited to the North Hills Ebony Women. Inc. Uh, organization, their scholarship reception um, on June 30th at La Roche University. One of our PR uh, senior graduates, uh, Taryn Douglas, has received a scholarship from them. And uh, my neighbor actually is a member of this group, so she asked me if I would represent uh, the school uh, at this reception. So I will be attending that. And one of the things is that Beatty, um, uh, as that the latest uh, count, is up to 834. Uh, students enrolled for next year. They were at an all-time going over 800 last year. Now they're at 834 at this point. That kind of goes up and down a little bit, but their, their enrollment is increasing. Fantastic. And that's for all nine schools, sending schools, not I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, our strategic plan only just begun, and you're already engaged on uh, promoting the board and visibility. So uh, yep. nice mm -hmm. job. It didn't mm -hmm. take long. <laughs> Any other reports from board members? Seeing how there are no, mi no more visitors, Mr. Clare? A motion to adjourn would be in order. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the board will be meeting an executive session to discuss a personnel item.